Hare Krishna, everyone. Very warm welcome to you all to today's conversation about karma, decoding karma. And we have our special guest with us again, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and as, as many of you watched the last um, conversation we had with, with Prabhu, so he's a world-renowned author, mentor, speaker, uh, a spiritual scientist, as we all know him, uh, and he's been uh, giving seminars all over the world. He's uh, also authored 25 books and done so many wonderful uh, articles, uh, written over 4,000 Gita meditations, which I highly recommend that anyone who's interested in studying the Gita, please visit GitaDaily.com. Uh, or the spiritual scientist. He also has a, his own podcast, the Monks Podcast. So there's plenty of uh, further future uh, material that you can go over. But today's uh, topic is definitely going to be specific towards karma. I thought it was a, you know, it's a very basic concept, and yet I find it quite misunderstood. Uh, I many people tend to understand the basic idea that what goes around comes around. You know, if you do good. Good things happen to you and all that but uh, if it were as simple as that i think uh, that would have been nice but karma isn't just that it's a, there's a, it's a much more complex system and uh, i find in my own life that the more you understand the nuances and you peel the layer you actually feel quite empowered because you start living you start understanding that every action every thought every deed that we do is somehow connected to our um, entire life experience and to our future experience as well. So it's quite an empowering um, understanding when we understand karma in a deeper sense. So I thought we could, uh, with the help of Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, please, uh, we, if we could just delve a little bit deeper and understand the full picture so that we can cater towards creating better karma for ourselves and understanding it and living a more conscious uh, lifestyle. Welcome, Prabhu. Are you still with us, Prabhu? It might be. Uh, are you still there, Prabhu? Okay, I think we've uh, lost him for a minute. Um, yes, so while we wait for him to come back, it's it, I thought, I thought, you know, when you talk to most people, they, they think that, yes, I understand karma. Mataji, I've grown up with the idea of, um, I know what karma is. <laughs> but actually, if we peel the layers, um, it comes with a lot more. In, uh, inherent in the idea of karma is obviously reincarnation, because if we didn't have many lives for the karma to unfold, then we wouldn't be able to explain how is it that some people are born in a very... Uh, difficult situation. Some people are born poor, some people are rich, some people are in a, uh, you know, some beautiful, some are not, some are intelligent, some are not, some are able. Some, so there's just so much diversity that, and it's not random, because if it was random, <laughs> it'd be very difficult to justify that. Uh, I think that was one of the questions that my mother had. Are you back, Prabhu? Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear Maybe. you. Okay, sorry about this. Thank you for no problem. Uh, inviting me. I'm grateful to be here with you today. And yes, the introduction that you gave, the topic of karma is so important. At one level, it seems intuitive, but at another level, there are many things which uh, don't seem to support it. There are many incidents mm. in our own life, in the world around us, which don't seem to support it. That's why it becomes a little complicated. So in the Bhagavad right. Gita, Krishna talks about how Gahana Karmano Gati. That Gahana, it's, it's, it's deep, it's intricate, it's complex. But still, right. that doesn't mean that it is something which cannot be, cannot be at least understood in terms of its broad principles. Mm. Okay. So, I'll start with, first of all, you have some, I'll start with a basic introduction to the concept of karma. And then we can right, move forward. Right, that would forward. be great. Yeah, please. So, sometimes words can become confusing because the same word can have different meanings mm -hmm. so the word karma we often unknowingly use it in three different senses 
One is the actions that we do. For example, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, you have a right to do your karma. Karma nevadika raste maafaleshu kadachin. So there, the word karma refers to the actions we are doing. Hmm? Right. So all of us have to do particular actions in our life. And for hmm. that purpose, we, we have to make choices. So the choices we make, they matter for us. Right. Then the second is that sometimes we may say, oh, it's, it's in my karma. Mm -hmm. It's in my karma means that we are talking about here karma as reactions. That right. oh, it karma in my karma. So that means I'm suffering my own karma. What we mean by that is reactions to our actions. So mm -hmm. the same word sometimes we use for our actions and sometimes we use for the word reactions. So right. okay, we all have, nobody can escape their karma. So here you're not talking about the action, but the reactions. Mm -hmm. And the third is sometimes we use this to refer to the whole system of action reaction. That we may sometimes use this in the sense of the law of karma is inescapable. That right. everybody is under the uh, under the jurisdiction of karma. So generally, when we talk about karma, it's good to be careful of which word we are using, which sense we are using the word in. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, um, if you want to, generally, if we are not so aware of the nuances, we are usually talking about the principle of action-reaction correlation. So, when you say, so if you ask, do you believe in karma? What do you mean? Well, if it went action, all of us are doing actions. So there's no question of belief in that. We all do actions. So, do you believe in karma means that? Do you believe that there is a system of action-reaction by which we will get we will be held accountable for our actions by which we get reactions to our actions in due course. Mm -hmm. So, so one reason, so these three meanings, action, reaction, and system of action, reaction, correlation. They're the broadly mm -hmm. the three meanings of karma. Okay. So, okay. so now if you keep this in mind, the re one reason why it becomes problematic is that it's not always linear. That means that just because I have done one action does not necessarily mean I'll get the reaction for that immediately. So let me, is it okay if I share my screen? Of course, yeah. I'll just quickly show an illustration here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you consider over here, this particular, if somebody has a credit line from a company, then what is happening is they may, they go to the supermarket, they might buy something worth 50 pounds or 20 pounds, 80 pounds or 100 pounds. And at this point, maybe throughout the month, they are buying, 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 buying. They don't have to pay anything. Just hmm? keep buying, keep buying. And then finally, they buy something worth five pounds. And when they're going out, they get the bill, and that's 255 pounds. Mm. Hey, what happened? I bought only worth five pounds. Right. Well, yes, but that's what you bought right now. So, but you have been buying for some amount of time, and it's all come together. We have to pay 255 pounds. So, mm. what happens is that means there is this one of there is the delay in the reactions to karma. Not all reactions come immediately. Mm. Or you could put it the other way, that the opposite can also happen. If it, the accumulated karma means what? That broadly speaking, I have done one, one reaction. Okay, That means, say, I've done one cause. So there we talk about, there we talk about multiple causes leading to one reaction. So here, mm -hmm. multiple purchases leading to one reaction. That right. is one way things might happen. Or the other could also happen that there's one cause and there could be multiple effects of that. So one mm -hmm. cause means that, okay, I put $250 in my, in my credit and I can keep buying afterwards for some time. So when I put it in, I don't get anything at that time. So the idea over here is the delay in karma is what makes things difficult. So this could be illustrated in this diagram that here, how karma might work is, 
it could it could work linearly say if we consider total karma to be like a water tank in that water tank there is water coming in from this side and coming out from this side mm -hmm. actions and the reactions now sometimes the water might just come straight in go through a pipeline and it comes out immediately more or less immediately so this is something like what we might call immediate or instant karma so if we put our hand in fire immediately our hand hand feels burning burning sensation right so some reactions come immediately some reactions may come after some time that's slightly delayed karma say for example somebody likes to eat a lot of ice creams and on a cold night they eat ice cream at uh, say 10 o'clock at night 11 o'clock at night 1 2 3 4 they half a dozen ice cream they eat and they feel very good i'm enjoying so much but the next one is 6 hours later and they wake up uh, they can barely speak their throat is sore completely right. so there is a 6 hour delay over there mm -hmm. on the other hand somebody may say start smoking at the age of 18 and they just enjoy having a puff and then at the age of 45 the they do a chest scan and the doctor says oh, you got lung cancer what age did you start smoking so here the reaction might come after some time maybe after 20 years right. so that is further delayed karma so now what is happening is the actions that we are doing it's like water going in from here it is always going in but it may not come out immediately and what you mentioned about reincarnation is that sometimes this delay may expand over one lifetime also beyond one lifetime that means the cause may be before this lifetime or the result may be after this lifetime right right but the principle is that actions do lead to reactions just not immediately Okay. Not necessarily immediately, Not necessarily right. right? Yeah. So uh, there's well, a really good point really here. Good here. Uh, but well, one could argue that that's just a logical, uh, you know, cause and effect relation. Okay, I smoke now. I might. There's a good chance I'll get lung cancer. That's written on the box. Um, is there something that's separate from karma? Is there something that is inherently conscious, inherently uh, maybe? biased towards uh, having good results and bad results meaning it's not just an arbitrary neutral cause and effect or does karma have an agenda does it want you to do why does it exist in the first place oh okay it's a very thoughtful question so <clears throat> is it simply like a natural mechanism if somebody mm -hmm. a child is ignorant and steps up from a say a second story building second level building the child will fall down and a criminal will also fall down so there the law of gravity which acts as neutral so is karma also neutral like that or is karma having a purpose that's a right. yes important question so my understanding of this two would be twofold at one level karma is value neutral at one level in the sense that that in the world the causes lead to effects so whether right. it is a with say if there are some children who are obedient and some children are you know, not not obedient mischievous not mischievous, kind of, but either child if the child put a hand in the fire they will burn exactly. the hand will burn so in that sense it's value neutral in one sense if there are certain actions it will lead to certain reactions that's one aspect to it but another aspect to it is that we are not just while there be mechan mechanical cause effect factors in the world but we ourselves are conscious beings mm -hmm. so that means there is a i have a physical hand which is a mechanical unit and in the it's made of flesh it can get burnt so not just my hand could get burnt if i put some wood in the fire it would also get burnt it's just an object but we are mm -hmm. conscious beings so at the material level the law of karma is like a mechanical law but at the level of consciousness the in the law of karma in the principles of karma one's intention also matters right and the ultimate purpose is twofold so to get one to push one from uh, from we could say vice toward virtue from doing actions which will lead to bad reactions to actions which will lead to good reactions from vice to virtue so krishna talks about vikarma and then sukarma 
or simply karma vi karma is viruddha rupena karma that which leads to bad reactions so broadly speaking we could say those actions which harm others they are vi karma so those are driving on the wrong side of the road can you hear me you're back yeah you're back yeah. sorry it's just a glitch so if somebody is driving on the wrong side of the road somebody is driving above the spirit speed limit somebody is violating the rules of traffic then they will be held accountable so that is vi karma it's like violating the rules of traffic then the second part is su karma su karma is a person is following the rules of traffic and that is definitely better then not following the rules of traffic because if we are right. following the rules of traffic we are creating trouble for others we are creating trouble for ourselves however just when we are driving on a road our purpose is not just to follow the rules of traffic our mm. purpose is to go somewhere to get to some destination so what happens is that if we had no particular destination to go to then while driving oh you can't take a turn over here you can't uh, ch change lanes over here you can't drive like this you can't drive like that mm -hmm. all that will say why so many rules if my purpose of driving is only to have fun then the rules can seem like coming in the way but if my purpose of driving is to get to a destination mm -hmm. then the rules start making sense okay you know if i follow these rules they follow those rules and then we all can get smoothly to our destination so this idea right. of going to a particular destination it, it's not just it's not just ethical it is spiritual so ethics is more about the way we function so ethic ethic ethics or morality is about the way we function and spirituality is about where we go so the mm -hmm. two are slightly different so at one level karma and prods us to come from being unethical being immoral to become moral well is not much fun because i may say all the enjoyment that i want get i am being told don't do this don't do this don't do this what is the fun in that but once we understand okay there is a destination that i meant to go to and what is the destination the bhagavad gita basically says the purpose of life is ultimately to grow in our potential to love grow in our potential to love and to serve we all wow. love and serve someone we can say that at a at a very basic level a newborn baby he says just loves herself or himself but as the baby grows the baby wants to please her mother he wants to please her father and the parents serve her and she says okay the parents say okay climb up that stairs and she looks up and she takes one step up and she looks and the parents punch her up and she takes another one step up so also serving so that tendency is there you want to please someone because there is a higher satisfaction in that and as we grow more and more we want to there is a tendency from this uh, there is a potential for our for our capacity to love and serve to expand and the culmination the summit of this potential is to love and serve the supreme reality so when we love and serve krishna because krishna is the lord of everyone everyone is krishna's parts so we love and serve everyone so in that mm -hmm. sense krishna refers to this as a karma a karma is not inaction but action which is beyond the domain of good and bad actions because this action which is motivated by pure love so the at one level karma is meant to push us from going from vikarma to karma from bad actions to right actions like the traffic cop they'll tell us don't follow the, don't go like this don't go to this speed limit traffic cops purpose is to that we don't violate the rules hmm but the traffic cops the traffic is rules are not just meant so that we don't violate the rules <laughs> ultimately it is meant so that we can go to the destination we meant to go to so in right. that sense karma is more about the traffic rules and then beyond karma in the bhagavad gita is yoga yoga is about connection connecting with the ultimate reality and so karma and yoga are naturally related so we could say broadly karma is more about morality yoga is about spirituality and within the various forms of spirituality yoga broadly yoga is not just physical postures 
sitting in particular posture but yoga is also connection it is connection right. loving uh, yoga culminates in bhakti yoga the bhagavad gita says sarva dharma an parityajya nam ekam sharanam rasha the loving surrender to krishna bhakti yoga is the highest that we connect with krishna with love that's like okay i am i'm, I'm following the rules of traffic but this is where i want to go so right. yes so yoga karma uh, does have a moral dimension definitely Ultimately. wonderful and thank you thank you for highlighting that it's not just about the the causal mechanical logistics of action and reaction yes. like just in a physical sense that is obviously there but that's a very a basic level of understanding that next you're saying is so there is an ethical dimension of going from vikarma something negative to just maybe something neutral following the laws of the road is neutral but beyond that uh if we want to make that connection like you're saying the to to maybe tap into the yoga aspect of karma karma yoga when when we yeah. make karma into karma yoga then uh, you're saying that you're connecting it to the conscious part of us it's not just the physical uh you're actually making that conscious connection okay why am i following the 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 rules on the road because i want to get to a certain destination and i don't want to cause trouble to my fellow travelers and i want to be a good citizen i want the whole country to thrive so similarly even in our lives we can see that that if we're mindlessly maybe unconsciously going through our actions uh it's a similar kind of experience it's a maybe a very basic karmic level of experience but if we make that conscious um uh, effort to to you know tap into the yoga aspect the karma yoga aspect and maybe we'll have a different experience of life because it's it's a conscious flow of actions conscious flow of karma so maybe uh, since you highlighted that if you can help us understand how to move from karma to karma yoga in a maybe more practical way and and what uh, philosophy okay. is behind yeah thank you that's an important point so before we can make sense of karma yoga i would just like to introduce the concept of destiny because the idea of moving towards yoga doesn't make sense unless the, the unless we understand the concept of destiny so what do i mean by destiny so all of us when we are born we have a certain stock accumulated stock of karma from our previous lives by karma i mean mm. the reactions to our past karma that karma in the form of reactions so it's like a baggage which each of us has we bring the baggage so it's a mm -hmm. accumulated stock pile of the reactions to our past actions that we bring with us from our previous lives and these reactions they will come to us in our present and our future to some extent so for example when a child is born some children are born in wealthy families some children are born in poor families mm. some children are born in a country with a lot of political instability some countries are children are born in countries with radical political stability and peace so why this radical differences in the starting point that is one aspect of one's destiny so destiny here is not some mysterious malevolent factor it is just the accumulation of karma kar karmic reactions that are going to come to us in the future so depending on which reactions come when we may do certain actions but we may not get the reactions to those actions immediately hmm and say if we study for a particular exam now when we study we expect that okay if i study i will get the results for this action but sometimes i may study and i still not get the results for my action why because the results don't determine only on my immediate action hmm. there is one more factor involved over there that factor is that when we act there are there are two there are two more factors there is karma daiva and kala kala daiva and karma uh, yeah. so if you see over here like if somebody is farming so when somebody is farming what happens is that they 
karma is basically i sometimes use four, these four d's for it duty plus destiny plus duration this will desired result so duty is karma destiny is daiva duration is kala mm -hmm. and all these three together lead to phala so for example if somebody is farming then when they are farming at that time sowing the seeds sowing the seeds is okay let me go back sowing the seeds is their duty sowing mm -hmm. the seed and plowing the land is their duty that is their karma then after that rains coming in the right quantity at the right time that is daiva that is destiny and then even after this to happen it's not that they are going to get the result immediately there is duration that's where the harvesting season has to come and then they'll get the desired result so karma plus daiva plus kala will lead to phala right. duty plus destiny plus duration will lead to the desired result so this could also we could apply this to many areas in life say if a couple get married and want to have a child then they may come together that is that that is the duty they're doing but just because they are coming together that doesn't is that doesn't mean the world will conception so no. conception is destiny and even when conception happens after that there has to be gestation it's not that the next day they want to have a baby with nine months in between and then they will have the baby so these three factors karma daiva kala all these three come together only then the result comes in. so broadly speaking there are two schools of thought you could say that there is one school of thought is called as karmavad and the other is daivavad so karmavad is which says i will work hard and i will succeed i'll get become the next bill gates i'll become the next elon musk i'll become i i'll work hard and i'll be succeed nothing else matter my hard work alone matters so karma vad that means karma is all that matters destiny doesn't matter the other extreme is if you consider this in the pendulum the other extreme is daiva vad that destiny alone determines results my actions don't matter some people may say oh my destiny is only rotten whatever i do nothing works mm. so such people become very passive so both of these emphasizing karma alone or emphasizing daiva alone both of mm. these are extremes karma and daiva both play their role karma and daiva when both come together then the results come up so broadly speaking we could say that eastern civilization is more or at least the way it has historically evolved often people in the west east when they don't have a holistic understanding they go more toward daiva oh this is destiny just like accept it they go more toward daiva and people in the west again we cannot generalize about civilization but it's a broad observation they focus more on karma this is our will this is what is going to happen this is i am going to work hard i am going to succeed mm -hmm. now the, the problem with either of these is that if we go toward any extreme it creates problems it creates disruption so if we don't accept the holistic principle of karma as i said about east and west over here see if we focus more on karma alone as it happens in the west mm -hmm. then the result is there is physical advancement in the west we have seen that oh there is no such thing as i will work hard will develop technology we will progress there is physical mm -hmm. advancement but the problem with that is no matter how hard we work there will be times when the results will not come mm. and then that leads to great agitation so if i was by my hard work i was supposed to produce results and if the results didn't come then it's not just that the results didn't come it means something is wrong with me intrinsically so it is that right. not that i am at a failure it it becomes i am a failure Mm. I made a failure. Is okay. It's one event that came in my life. But if my work alone is going to produce the results, and if they don't produce the results, then it becomes I am a failure. Right. Say, I am a loser, or people may claim, blame, uh, condemn others. You are a loser. So <laughs> on one side is greater physical advancement when there is emphasis on karma, but there is greater mental agitation also because there is a lack of acceptance when results don't go our way. 
Wow. Now, on the other hand, in the Eastern way of looking at it, there is some amount of physical passivity. If we consider people are living in a rigidly hierarchical society, where they don't aspire much for upward mobility, it's except this is my lot in life. So there is physical or material passivity over there. But what many, many sociologists have observed that people in Asia, whether it is in the rural parts of India or China, they, although they may seem to be living in, not seem to, they live in physical deprivation, they seem to have greater mental peace. Mm. They have lesser prosperity, but they have greater peace, stability. Why? Because to some extent, when things go wrong in our life, if we have an understanding of daiva, then it's easier to accept it. So there are different civilizational values. So daiva is very important to understand. If you don't understand that, uh, then we set ourselves up for trouble when things don't work out our way. And you had, mm. your question was about karma yoga. Uh, uh, can I go to that or you would like to ask something about this? Right let now? let me just uh, let me just summarize what I think I'm understanding and then maybe you can clarify. Yeah. Please, uh, yeah. So you're saying that uh, daiva, daiva is a, a, an accumulation of our past actions so yes, it's, it's the, the baggage the baggage of what we're coming in already so that is what in the you know in english we term as fate or destiny because yes. that is already something we have done but intrinsic in that is that we have done it it's not just a yes, random yes. bhagwan ne bola hai or you know uh, true, it's true. not that we have done past actions and we're bringing that in and that is our baggage as such and when you're saying karma you mean present action my own hard work labor in this lifetime in this situation in this circumstance and you're saying either the karmavadis are like i'm going to work so hard and i'm going to materialize any destiny i want that's a little bit uh, skewed and also yes. this other idea that well you know it's already pre-written and we just have to accept whatever whatever we get you know this devavad is uh, uh, maybe a little bit more passive it gives you a lot of mental peace possibly but maybe not so much um, physical stability as you uh, physical advancement physical change advancement we will, sorry we will be lethargic about making physical change acha right so we may not achieve as much if if we yes. have this passivist True. attitude that was really uh, you know enlightening because it's it's true i think we get most of the questions get stuck on this well how much of my destiny can i change if at all any of it uh, maybe that would be my next question can you change the past you can't change the past okay. but can you change okay. what happens yeah that's a that's a very important point now can we change our destiny so again, like I started by talking about karma as having multiple meanings. So similarly, we could say that the word destiny, what does it mean? So even that past stockpile of karma, which I have with me, there are some positives in it, some negatives in it. Mm -hmm. And they are going to come upon me during the course of my life. So how they unfold, that exactly is not fixed. That they are going to unfold in my life, that is fixed. But how they unfold, that may not be fixed. That can vary. Let me exa explain the example. That the So, suppose, say, three people are walking along the road, they're chatting. And in front of them, there's some water that has been spilled on the footpath. And none of them notice it. And all three of them step on that water, all three of them slip. On the first, is just next to a, near a overhead pole, they catch hold of the pole and steady themselves. The second, they slip on that water, they fall down, and nothing is hurt except their pride. Hmm. The third slips and falls, but right where their, the person's head is, there is some construction material kept open, and there is a stone with a sharp edge, and that hits hmm. their head, it's over there. And they face some terrible injury. Right. They, they are hospitalized, they are getting a concussion, and they are hospitalized for two months. So, now what has happened is, in one sense, all three of them 
did this you could say the same action all three of them were inattentive for while walking now all three of them inattentive while walking but the mm -hmm. three of them that inattention led to different degrees of re result reaction mm -hmm. so why is that because the reactions that we get to our actions like somebody buys a 5 dollar from a supermarket and they get a 5 dollar bill somebody buys something worth 5 dollar and they get a 250 dollar bill why the difference because the past purchases are also coming in mm. so that's why the point i'm making is that when we do certain actions right now the reactions that may come to us because of those actions they can vary we have a certain quantity of reactions to suffer that is we are going to suffer that that we are going to get certain good we are going to get certain bad often it matters in what form that good or bad comes in form that good or bad comes that means that say over a period of 10 years a person has three major problems in their life maybe they go through a major health crisis they got got cancer and they have to get some treatment and they're hospitalized they're out of circulation for a year or so but they recover from that then maybe uh, they have there's some political intrigue against them backstabbing in their office and then they are fired and they have a court case and then they fight against it and then they are exonerated and they are honorably reinstated that's the second thing and the third is that they have some big relationship issue maybe a quarrel within the family it almost appears as if the family is going to break apart and then they go through counseling they do various things it's very agonizing but eventually they reconcile so mm -hmm. all three of these are big problems but suppose they are spaced out over 10 years one problem comes now one problem comes after 5 years another problem comes after 5 years then relatively speaking the person can take it but if mm -hmm. all three problems come at the same time mm -hmm. all three problems come at the same time it may be unbearable mm -hmm. losing one's job losing one's family losing one's health at the same time how will a person survive at that time so now we could say that by destiny all these three problems are going to come in a person's life but one's own actions right now may determine when those problems come so if a person is is you could say negligent or they they are a little abusive with their family maybe they are a little arrogant in their workplace maybe that person as i said that but they are smoking and doing things like that so then they are setting things for a problem in all areas of their life and then all those problems hit at the same time so can destiny be changed in the sense that when particular actions reactions are going to come we don't know so if we act responsibly right now we could minimize the problems that we face so like during the pandemic so if somebody follows the basic safety rules then they may not get covid immediately or they may not get get be affected by covid to that extent mm -hmm. or they would be affected to if they are if they are careless so in that sense our past karma the reactions are going to come we by responsible action can minimize the problems that we face during the course of our life that's why responsible living is important mm. if somebody is so if somebody doesn't follow basic principles of parenting you now they just they either neglect their kids too much or they are like helicopter parents over just dominating their parents your kids too much mm. and then the kids become rebellious after some time now is the kid becoming rebellious their destiny or is it their own action right now mm. so it is largely their own action now you could say exceptions sometimes people follow all the rules of parenting all the guidelines for parenting and still the kids sometimes go through a very bad phase in their teenage sometimes the sometimes the parents are completely negligent or abusive or not abusive, uh, are not very good parents and still kids turn out to be good so there mm -hmm. are exceptions also that means if somebody has a good destiny or a bad destiny good stop pile of karma bad stop pile of karma the causal factors from this life may not play a role but the point mm -hmm. i'm making is rather than thinking that my destiny is fixed so what can i do rather we should focus on 
what is it that i can do in this situation mm -hmm. to make the best pos future best possible future so when care, when a, when say we are taking care of our children we should never think oh maybe my destiny this, this is going to be a bad child a parent should always do their best and sometimes mm -hmm. even after doing their best some children may not turn out to be as we would like them to be and then we can accept as destiny that's why krishna says karmanne vadikaraste maapaneshu kadachana that do your work properly because your work it does play one role it is one factor in contributing to the result mm -hmm. and therefore you need to do your work properly but at the same time your work is not the sole factor in contributing to the result and that is why be detached from the results ma faleshu kadachana why because ma karma phala hetur bhur because don't think your work is the sole cause of the result but at the same time don't think that your mm -hmm. work will play no role last time so, i just want to highlight can i can i just uh, highlight this okay. point that I think this understanding that our work is not the sole cause of the result that is something that I think is missed a lot of the time so you're you're highlighting that Krishna is I was just about to ask you this question why why would Krishna say that we are not entitled to the results or we should not have um an attachment towards what the result is but you're saying it you're slightly differently you're saying that we shouldn't think that whatever I have done now should guarantee this result because that is not the sole cause of a specific result we we haven't taken into account like you said daiva and kala and we're not taking into account krishna's grace in any result materializing so maybe is exactly. this shloka more more about surrender yes uh, it's more of surrender is a little higher level of applying the shloka so Achha. let me just if you don't mind And just can you see my screen right now? No, not yet. No. Oh, okay, that's strange. Sorry, we last lost him. I'm sure he'll be back any minute. So, uh, so far we've been discussing just uh, that karma is not linear. This was a very important point that we made right at the beginning, and it kind of answers the the question that why does maybe bad things happen to good people? Because sometimes we think. हमने तो कुछ बुरा किया नहीं हमारे जिंदगी में हमने हमेशा अच्छा ही किया है तो हमारे जिंदगी में खराब वाईफ़ in terms of this equation of karma daiva kala and phala the mm -hmm. first thing krishna is saying is do your karma do your duty hmm? mm -hmm. this is karma plays a role in the phala coming up but right ma ma karmanne vadikaraste ma phaleshu kanadachana phaleshu do not demand the result why mm -hmm. because your karma alone doesn't determine the result so mm -hmm. karma alone doesn't lead to phala therefore do not demand the result do not be attached to the result but somebody may say hmm. that, okay if i am not going to get the result then why do the work yeah. but the idea is that your karma does play a role your karma does play a role so what does that mean karma does play a role that okay if the farmer has become expert at sowing the seed and plowing the land and in this season when the there is no rainfall the farmer will not get the results But the next year when the farmer sows the results will come so your karma does play a role so what happens is when we work hard and sometimes we just feel oh if i don't succeed what is the use of working hard well it is it is if we are doing our duty if we are acting responsibly we are acting diligently it is always valuable it always counts it may not count in terms of success coming immediately because the daiva may not be favorable right now because the daiva is not favorable so the result may not come but the good karma that i am doing right now it is contributing it's like you remember the metaphor of the water tank like water mm -hmm. is going in from here right now but 
it is not coming out from there i am putting a good clean drinkable water from here but from the other side dirty water is coming in why is that yes but the water inside that water tank stored water is not infinite it is into the dirty water will end and the clean drinkable water that you are putting in will come out from the other side right so be patient so that's why karma yoga now if i may just go ahead karma yoga means what that do the karma without the without the obsession with the phala do the karma as your duty as an offering to the ultimate reality as an offering to the divine this is what i am meant to do let me do it mm. the phala it doesn't mean the phala will not come but mm. we are not obsessed with the phala we are not caught with the phala and that's why there's a slight difference in the gita's terminology between results and goals the goals are what we set before we start an activity and setting goals is perfectly fine we mm -hmm. all need goals to be motivated but goals come so that we can do our karma well but mm -hmm. results come after we have done the karma so krishna is not saying don't set goals many times when i speak on the bhagavad gita in universities students have this question if i didn't don't if i if if i don't set a goal i want to get grade a i want to get cgpa 4.5 i want to get 95 percentile marks whatever what will inspire me to study mm. so krishna is not saying don't set goals in fact in the mahabharat war which followed after krishna spoke the bhagavad gita arjuna would set goals every day okay today we'll encounter with this particular regiment in the kaurava army we will take down this warrior today we'll go to neutralize this particular unit so set goals So setting goals is perfectly fine. It's essential so that we do our karma. We are inspired to do our karma well. But setting goals is before we do the activity. Results are what we get after we do our activity. So mm. after we do our activity, sometimes the results may come, sometimes the results may not come. So, in one sense, uh, you know, just to conclude this point, there is uh, in modern psychology or in modern self-help. there is stephen covey and he wrote this seven rules of effective people and he talked about the principle of working within your circle of influence and not the circle of uh, concern that we have a certain certain circle which we can work on and actually speaking what the gita is saying is that same thing and exactly how the stephen covey said that that the results are in your circle of uh, concern but they are not in your circle of control you cannot mm -hmm. control the results but what you can control is your actions so do your actions and eventually the results will come so that's the mood over there makes makes a lot more sense the way you're saying it so it's not that we don't have uh, the right for you know ex to expect some results but uh, but maybe expect maybe the wrong word but there will be results but we shouldn't be there, attached there is, to there it is aspiring for the results and there is being attached to the results uh -huh. we, we all we all will aspire for results say yeah in every activity that we do we aspire for something otherwise what will be our inspiration for doing it but while aspiring for that we also understand the results are not in my control alone so mm -hmm. i can gracefully accept if the results don't come and that graceful acceptance becomes easier when we have a broader understanding that okay when the results are not coming that's because some factors beyond me didn't work out and mm -hmm. yes sometimes some i often ask students how many of you feel that you studied hard but you didn't get the marks that you deserved mm -hmm. and almost every student raises their hand yes then i say and i also ask the question that how many of you didn't study a lot but somehow whatever you studied came in the exam and you got more marks than what you deserve mm and that's the, true a good number of students raised hands that time also now right. it may not be appear to for us the same thing but but mm. if we look at our life whenever we attain some success in life we say i worked hard and i attained success yes you worked hard but there is also in nature what we call you get the lucky break these things work mm. out well you know so when we succeed it is not just our endeavor that is leading to success our endeavor is important but there are so many other factors that fall in place and that's why success occurs right. so 
if we now come to that idea of god and surrender to god so if we understand at one level we might see this destiny as simply mechanical oh sometimes my past my destiny will work out favorably sometimes it will not work out favorably and that is just the way of life is and i have to accept it that is one level but if you understand that god is overseeing these things upadrashta anumanta ch then it becomes relatively easier mm-hmm. that yes i worked hard i did not get the results but god must be having some better plan for me so what happens is we can yoga means to connect to connect with the big picture and okay my action alone doesn't provide the result there is a bigger reality out there and i try to connect with that bigger reality bhakti yoga means i start understanding that bigger reality is a loving person a loving person who actually cares for me so that's why in in bhakti that acceptance okay when things don't work out that acceptance becomes relatively easier because without that devotional aspect there are only two factors either things are in my control or things are out of my control and when things are in my control i'm happy and things are out of my control i'm panicking but when we have the bhakti yoga understanding then we understand that even when things are out of my control they are not actually out of control mm. they are still under krishna's control and Very right good. now i am mean, going through a bad phase but mm. krishna is in charge and krishna will bring good out of the bad so wow. accepting negative phases in destiny becomes easier when we understand that krishna is overseeing it and krishna will orchestrate things for my good ultimately wow if it's okay i'm going to repeat that <laughs> so yeah. i really really appreciate what you're saying because without krishna in the picture without god it seems that there's just two variables our own effort our own karma what we have control over and what we don't have control over but you're saying yes. that if we we bring in this idea of karma yoga and we unite with krishna's plan we unite with the bigger supreme plan then we we lose that fear almost that when we are not in control it is not that no one is in control yeah he is in control exactly. so that that is that is very a uh, powerful realization because then you don't have that fear that everything is out of control oh my goodness like especially in this age that we live in right now it's very scary times you know corona and the politics and just a lot of terrorism it's just a a lot of fear fear based mentality but if we accept the shelter accept the control of the supreme will we understand actually this is all uh, you know this is all part of his um, plan Kal- kali yuga is meant to be here it's not that uh, uh, this is not all random this is not out of control and uh, so it really helps me um, you know make sense of it all when i when i accept that it's not in my control but it's not out of control krishna is in control yes that's true that's very true it's that in one sense you could put it that in the world it's like we are in the ocean quite often the metaphor of a bhava sagar is used material ocean mm. this is a ocean where things are going to be uh, turbulent so the ocean is not in our control but uh, if we are connected with krishna if we shelter in krishna then we are in the ocean but we are not just in the ocean we are in an unsinkable ship in the ocean and that mm-hmm. ship of our connection with krishna is what provides a shelter it provides a strength otherwise it is just like right. we alone in the ocean what is the ocean going to be do to me so if you consider the help that krishna promises in the bhagavad gita krishna doesn't tell arjuna okay you surrender to me and there will be no more problems in your life Mm. Krishna says you face problems but you will overcome those problems by my grace. Mat chitta sarva durgani mat prasada trishasi. You will go over those problems. You in fact the word you trishasi means float over those problems. And how do we float over? By that ship. So Krishna does promise a stormless sea but he does provide us an unsinkable ship. And that ship yeah. is the ship of the attitude of seva bhav of loving service. so whatever situation i am in krishna i want to serve you how can i serve in this situation how can i try to make things better i use my god given intelligence and try to move forward 
so i'll just use one more metaphor to illustrate this point that when sometimes by destiny by past karma suddenly they're put in a terrible situation you just don't know what to do at that time so what happens is what when we stay on the spiritual sh- shape how do we stay on it we change our driving question not why but how mm. Mm. not why is this happening but how can i best respond to it it's right now it's a terrible storm now mm. if somebody is, is experienced in shipping and uh, they know that you could you know, there's no use in asking why a storm has come when it has come well it has come now what can i do in this storm so how can i best respond to it and quite often the how question is very empowering once i start asking how question there are always things which i can do once i start asking the why question why is this happening why is this happening yes in philosophical terms you understand it's it's karma but specifics it's very difficult to understand to so mm. shift the question from why to how that's why in the if you read the mahabharat the ramayana there are always good people and there are bad things happening to them the pandavas were good people but they were exiled to the forest the the parikshit was a good person but he was cursed so there mm. there are examples of good things happening to bad people but what the scriptures do is they change the question at a philosophical level do they they do explain why bad things happen to good people we could go into our past karma and things like that but in terms of models in terms of giving living examples all these characters change their question not mm. why bad things happen to good people but when bad things happen to good people what do good people do <laughs> when bad things happen to good people what do good people do and what do good people do they focus on okay what what is the positive that i can do in the situation how can i serve in the situation how can i contribute in the situation when lord ram was exiled to the forest at one level he's the lord he is he doesn't have any bad karma but he's acting in this world to demonstrate to us how to act he's the acting as the ideal human being hmm. so at that time you know, some of the courtiers and even lakshman tells ram that this is so unfair you are being told to go to the forest when well, you have done nothing wrong and lord hmm. ram's answer is amazing at that time <laughs> he says that generally we kings and royalty we are so caught in in the state administration that we rarely get time to associate with sages and learn from them so that you really wow. has to be done in old age but he says mm-hmm. that i had the opportunity to do that in my youth isn't that a blessing and he wow. says a younger brother is like mm-hmm. a son so every father wants that their son be enthroned so if i am seeing bharat oh. enthroned <laughs> that's wonderful and then not only that he says that and in one action i am able to enrich myself with wisdom i am able to see my younger brother who is like a son being uh, uh, honored i am able to serve my honor my father's word i am able to please my mother so what negativity is there in it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so beautiful. It's a, it's yeah. incredible. It's completely so, shift of the perspective. Yeah, mm-hmm. rather than why is this happening? Okay, what is the good I can do in this situation? So I just talking about another metaphor, which maybe we will I'll conclude this particular part of the discussion is that mm-hmm. when sometimes life suddenly turns dark. It's like we are going on a road and suddenly the whole road the street light go off hmm and then we are plunged into darkness sometimes our hope we had a whole plan for our life and everything seems to have gone for a toss in one change so we can ask why did the street light go off that's a valid question to ask at a particular time but not hmm. when i am lost on the road so <laughs> at that time it's not in our power to turn on the street lights but what is in our power is okay i have my phone let me turn on my flashlight the flashlight does not replace the street light the flashlight mm. cannot show all the way ahead but the flashlight can show me one step ahead one step ahead okay there's no ditch over here let me take this one step oh this is slippery let me not go here let me go here 
so if we focus on that question what can i do right now to make things better or at least to not make things worse mm -hmm. then we always can make a difference in whatever situation we are in that the flashlight of service attitude is still there for us to turn on for us to turn mm -hmm. on and okay in this situation if i do this see it's like a funny thing to say that no matter how bad situations are we never lose the power to make them worse no matter how bad situations are we so never true. lose the power to make them worse wow but but when we say who who would want to make things worse no nobody wants to make them worse i may say this relationship is terrible right now mm but I, no, whatever i do nothing seems to be helping mm. okay but can you worsen the relationship yeah sure this take off your verbal restraints for 15 minutes just speak whatever comes in your mind and even the best relationship can be ruined in 15 minutes so mm -hmm. the point i'm making is that if we always have the power to make things worse that means we are not as powerless as we think if i can mm -hmm. make things worse then maybe i can make things better also i can make things better also <laughs> absolutely so in, a small way, in a small 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 way i can make things better in mahabharat krishna tells arjuna that the wise and the unwise both go through distress in this world but the difference is that the unwise often act in ways that makes the distress worse wow. and the wise act in ways that minimize the distress so that wow. is the ultimate i would say empowerment that we can get by the concept of destiny destiny karma and god's grace if we have that service attitude is krishna must be having some plan some plan mm -hmm. he has i don't know what the plan is what is all this happening in my life but krishna mm -hmm. you are my lord i am your servant please guide me how i can serve you mm -hmm. if you keep that attitude then that's like turning on the flashlight okay i can take this mm -hmm. one step forward one step forward one step forward and if you keep taking small small steps forward eventually the street lights will come back eventually you'll find that the dark phase we have gone through so prabhupar would say that the best prayer that you can offer to krishna is krishna please give me always the strength to serve you please always give me the strength to serve you that no matter the street lights go let me never throw away the flashlight let me never give up the seva bhav with that seva bhav we can always contribute to making things better i i couldn't agree more with this point because i really feel that the more you understand like you're explaining the more we understand the nuances of how and why karma works in a certain way it, it can be very empowering uh, that actually just like you're saying it we never lose the power to make it worse <laughs> even that is empowering in its own way uh maybe while we're here if we could just briefly touch on how because again coming back to this point the more we understand how karma works the more we can fine tune our actions in an empowered way yes so, perfect so is it really is is it linked in with jnana is karma very much linked in with jnana yoga like jnana deepena right the 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 torch okay. light of knowledge yes so now jnana the it has two distinct meanings one is that just knowledge as you said that not the torch light of knowledge which enables us to understand things jnana deepena bhaswata and that is definitely helpful krishna says that is nothing as purifying as knowledge because it helps us to see things properly it helps us to make choices wisely and it is very empowering okay? however that jnana is different from jnana yoga hmm jnana yoga is where the idea is knowledge itself is the solution right by knowledge i will understand that actually i am nothing to do with this body i am a soul i am spiritual everything material is temporary it is all illusory it is all it is all going to be it is all going to dis, uh, dissipate get dissipated so i will be unaffected by that so that relies a lot of on intellectual analysis and detachment so mm -hmm. jnana yoga itself does not even acknowledge sometimes the role of god and surrender to god so jnana is important but jnana yoga can sometimes be very problematic because everything in one sense in jnana yoga depends only on 
my intellectual capacity to analyze and distance myself from situations and it can be very difficult jnana itself is yes i get a broader perspective of looking at things and when i look at the big picture i understand that beyond me and the difficulty that i'm facing there is a supreme law so i may not be able to face this problem right now this problem may seem too big to me but krishna is above this and krishna is bigger than this problem so as they say mm -hmm. that that they say that we say we often say that don't tell god how big your problems are tell your problems how big god is god is so so that means i am here this problem is here but god is way up here so if i focus on my problems i'll be overwhelmed if i look up at god he is bigger than this problem he will help me come out this problem so if by gyan we mean the understanding of these three elements of reality that i as a soul am here and that the world is out there and then beyond that is krishna then if we are understanding that then definitely that knowledge is very very empowering okay i like that point that you made that if sometimes we if we're too much on the mental platform and uh, maybe gyana yoga as you as you're describing it my understanding was slightly different that gyana yoga was the one linking us to krishna but the way you're describing that sometimes it makes it difficult to we, maybe we detach ourselves so much from Come the actual karma. understanding yeah no sorry if it's also, i'm not saying gyana yoga always is negative by the process of gyana if we come to the connection with krishna that is uh, wonderful krishna talks about that is bahunam janmana mante gyanavan mam prapadyate that eventually the gyanis come to me but sometimes the gyanis may say that okay there is no ultimate reality there is only yes. there is only matter and there is spirit there is no supreme spirit mm -hmm. then there is no supreme spirit to take shelter of there is also right, one school right. of thought but the bhagavad gita is not talking about that school of thought much it doesn't support that school that idea right So coming back to the point, what? Let's say that you have convinced yourself there's just spirit and matter, and then, like you're saying, that uh, it's maybe it's all just a bit illusory, and there's all this karma. What does it really mean? That there's no real meaning to it at the end of the day, uh, because one of the questions here, uh, if I scroll back, I lost it. But oh, Krishna says sarva dharma anparityajya, right? So maybe it means that there's no point of even doing our karma. You know, we've already talked about why we should continue. He's not saying that we should give up everything. but this idea of maybe becoming too detached uh can be quite tricky you're saying uh and i i can really especially for iskon as a community sometimes we see that as an excuse to not do your duty or an excuse to uh maybe just be more on the philosophical level than actual practical level of of uh, functioning so um maybe just a little bit of advice on anyone who might be feeling like well if i just philosophize my way through life then i don't have to worry about my actions yes <clears throat> see the problem with that approach is that the gita is eminently a practical book it's a action oriented book so and there could be <clears throat> like i talked earlier about this karma vad and daiva vad mm -hmm. so that some people orient towards things are my control and i want to change things and some people are Okay, things are not in my control. Let me accept and move on. So there is also the role of one's own dis. I have a Can more accept. Sorry. sorry. Maybe That's just repeat the last bit. Yeah. That when some bad things happen in someone's life, people themselves are differently wired. Each one of us has a particular nature. so some people okay sometimes unfair things happen in life let's accept it and move on with life so that that could be the attitude of some people and for some people you no know, this kind of unfair things if they allowed to happen this person will come out of attack this person will do this with many others i want to i stand up to this that is fine that is there are different natures if you look at the five pandavas relatively speaking bhima is more of counter puncher you punch me i'll punch you back harder so he is quite aggressive if you consider yudhishthir he is relatively pacifist okay let's not escalate things let's try to talk and talk things out let's try to resolve things now both of them are devotees hmm? but they have different orientations so sorry we keep orientation individual nature yeah individual nature there might be difference but 
you can't make it an absolute principle that okay just accept and philosophize we all have to play a part and what part am i best suited to playing can i just passively accept whatever things are happening well passivity is not the point yudhishthir also was not simply recommending passivity while yudhishthir was in the forest he was constantly learning wisdom he was growing in wisdom so that he could even yudhishthir in, in, in the forest he actually even learned gambling let me say why learn gambling because he suspected that after the exile gets over they might be challenged to another gambling match and again he might be tricked to try to be swindled out so he was working in his own way so we all uh, that just because this world is illusory doesn't mean that we just neglect the world and just live, live passively or irresponsibly so maybe uh, to summarize the difference between your question uh, the answer to your question is there's a difference between detachment and irresponsibility we are meant to be detached but not irresponsible mm -hmm. so what, how could i give an example for this say suppose a child a student has an exam and the student is not studying at all for the exam maybe he is playing video games or watching tv or something like that and the mother comes and says hey why are you not studying he says oh everything is destined whatever is in my destiny that will come to me so that is not detachment that is irresponsibility mm -hmm. why because you have to do your part you have to study right. in fact before the kurukshetra war vidura is repeatedly telling dhritarashtra that stop your son from antagonizing the pandavas if you don't stop him there will be a devastating war the whole kuru dynasty will be destroyed and at that time dhritarashtra tries to take the, this cop out he says oh you know i am just a tiny mortal and destiny is almighty if it mm -hmm. is the destiny that our, our dynasty will destroy who am i to stop so at mm -hmm. that time vidura makes a statement which we all need to remember he says that destiny determines the consequences of our actions not our actions themselves destiny determines the consequences of our actions not our actions themselves so the student who says i will not study well destiny will determine after studying whether you get the marks or not hmm. but destiny doesn't mean determine whether you don't whether you study or not so if we are not studying so what what vidura tells dhritarashtra is yes the duryodhan may not listen to you and still the war may happen but you hmm. need to put your foot down so hmm. irresponsibility means not doing our duty hmm. detachment means accepting whatever results come after we have done after anything. doing it right yeah that is the difference between them beautiful beautiful right so yeah very very clear distinction between being detached from the results and being irresponsible or and just kind of being lazy in the mode of ignorance well you know let krishna look after it krishna says he will protect us but he was only going to look after our karmas to the degree that we have truly surrendered that is the other cop out it's almost like you can hear it in the conversation that you're explaining between vidura and dhritarashtra that he's using it as a cop out oh well destiny you know i don't have to really do anything so so many times we can hear it in our own mind that we're using an excuse that oh well, krishna is the supreme person is in charge you know let he's in charge there's nothing i can do no you're saying we must do our absolute best then detach ourselves from the result very powerful are you still with us prabhu i think we'll just wrap up with the last uh, of the major questions that i had uh with with today's uh, with the agenda that we had with karma today because there's so many more questions and i uh, we're hoping to do another one in two weeks time to really fine tune what it means to uh to be responsible for our karmas what does it mean on a daily practical uh level like if i speak harsh words there is a specific kind of karma if i disrespect my elders there is a specific kind of karma involved so i, I was thinking the next uh, podcast can be about uh, maybe reducing our karmic load <laughs> how to on a practical level reduce our part, uh, our negative karmic load that can be the next uh, podcast but today i just wanted to wrap up 
with the idea that uh, why why does karma exist and why are we suffering? I've already done a, done a conversation about this, but it always seems to be the crux of the matter that why are we having to uh, live by the system where suffering is so inherent? Why does karma linked so uh, intrinsically with suffering? Uh, I'm wondering whether you're still here, Prabhu. <laughs> okay. Are no? you back, Prabhu? Yes. Yeah, I'm there. Can you hear me? Okay. Were, were you so, able, were, were yeah, you I, able I to hear you. me? I heard you. Okay. Yeah, I heard you. So, yeah, I think this is an important point, and this could itself lead to a discussion, but quickly to speak this point is that there is a fundamental worldview that is important. That mm. you could put it that is the world like a hotel or is it like a hospital? <laughs> a hotel means, you know, I, in both places I have to pay a bill. But basically the hotel is like a place for enjoyment. I can order a 10 course menu, I can choose what I order, and I can enjoy the food. Whereas in hospital, also I'll get food to eat. But the purpose of being a hospital is not to get good food. Right? There, is a, there is another purpose over there. So even in the hospital, my actions will have consequences. If I take the medicine properly, I'll be healthier. If I don't take the medicine properly, then I'll become sicker. My actions will always have consequences. But at a basic level, the Gita, is, Gita says that this world is Dukkhalaya. Dukkhalaya mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that we everything is always miserable and we all have to suffer in misery. What it means is that misery, is, misery or distress is like a constant background feature of the world, and that is meant to set like a baseline expectation. Just like if I consider the Himalaya, Himalaya, if I go to the Himalayas, snow is a basic background feature which is always going to be there. Mm. Now, of course, within that snow, I can do something constructive. I can do something ambitious also. Suppose somebody can climb up the Mount Everest and they can achieve something. There are beautiful sights to see over there. There are things which you can do over there. But the basic baseline expectation is, you, if you are in the Himalayas, there is no use complaining about the cold. It is going mm. to be cold. Be ready to accept that. So similarly, at one level, at a baseline level, whether we act in a, we do good karma or bad karma, we all are going to grow old, we are all going to get diseased, we all are going to die. Mm. So these are common distresses for everyone. And in that sense, there is a baseline of distress in this world. Of course, we can make things worse if we want. Mm. Uh, somebody can smoke and drink and do all kinds of things and instead of dying in old age, they may die young. Mm. And instead of leaving a good legacy for their family, they will just leave their family with a big debt. So we can make things worse. But mm. the understanding is that when we are living in a hospital, the purpose is of being a good patient is what? To be a good patient means eventually to go out of the hospital to go back home. Mm. So similarly, Krishna says that yes, we all need to do good karma and it's, it's, it's important, but ultimately, the purpose of good karma is not just to be happy in this world. This world is like a hospital and beyond that is another world. Another world is the spiritual world, Krishna's abode. In all in this world is destroyed, that part will not be destroyed. So it is to attain that abode, that is the ultimate purpose of life. But that doesn't mean we don't care how we live in the world. We are meant to live responsibly. We are meant to contribute constructively in society. But ultimately, yes, there's distress in this world. And that distress is meant to push a person out of the hospital. That right. no matter how good a patient you are, you are not meant to make the hospital your home. You are mm -hmm. meant to get out of the hospital and go to your home. So that's the right. ultimate purpose of this whole system and the baseline of distress in the world. Baseline of distress. We will have to do another discussion on why is the baseline distress? <laughs> why can't why couldn't uh, the samsara be sukhalayam ashaswatam? <laughs> why couldn't it just be temporary but full of joy? 
but that can be another discussion from another. There are many questions, but I'm aware of our time together. And I promise everybody listening that we'll, we'll be back. Prabhuji has agreed to come back maybe in a few weeks' time to, to do the round two of karma because we've only just peeled the external layers. We've only just started uh, truly truly understanding uh, you know, just the basics of karma. But I'm also interested in what happens on a daily basis. Daily, how, what, what should our, you know, Vaishnav Sadachar be? What, what should our interactions with each other be? Hare Krishna, she's, uh, yeah. uh, what, what do we, sorry, what do we do? How to interact with the world? Because that also makes a big difference in, um, in our experience, the, how to minimize our bad karma and increase our sukriti as such, how to gain the favor of the Supreme how to minimize the um, yeah negative effects as such. So maybe that can be our practical uh, session next time. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, we'll discuss do you want, that sometime. Prabhu, for everyone listening, uh, Prabhuji is, a, is, is like a supercomputer at summarizing. Right. <laughs> Every time I listen to one of your talks, uh, I'm completely fascinated by how you can remember the entire conversation and give a, a, a great summary. Uh, I wanted to ask if you wanted to do that today. <laughs> I don't oh, know if you're... So thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, sure. So broadly, I'd say that we discussed four main points. One was just understanding the principle of karma. How mm -hmm. there is accountability for our actions. But what makes the accountability difficult to understand is there is delay. That one action may lead to re reactions after some time. Like I pay money and I get... I can buy for a long amount of time, but eventually I have to pay. So karma mm -hmm. can lead to reactions, but after some time. And that's why it becomes Gahana. That was one part about mm -hmm. why karma is difficult to understand. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because it's like water going in from inside. Good water may go inside from inside. But right now, the water coming out may not be good. Because it's old, bad water that is there inside is coming out. So mm -hmm. that delay is what makes karma difficult to understand. That was one point mm -hmm. we discussed. And then... Why is this delay there? For that, we talked about this destiny. Destiny is basically the total water that is present inside. Some of it will come out. So karma, daiva, and kala together lead to phala. So mm. karma, daiva, and kala. That kala is what sometimes makes things confusing. So we discussed about how Western civilization is more karma-centered. To some extent, Eastern civilization is more daiva-centered. But there is a balance in both. And we have that mm. balance then we can move forward systematically then in that connection the next point we discussed was about how working with karma yoga what does karma yoga means mm -hmm. that we do our karma diligently but know that because my karma alone doesn't produce the result so i am relatively speaking detached with the difference between mm -hmm. the detachment and the responsibility irresponsibility that i don't do my karma at all detachment means after i do my karma i know that because my karma alone doesn't produce the result so I don't get overwhelmed if the results don't come. And the last part was we introduced the concept of bhakti, that this whole system is not just mechanical, that there is a personal div divinity underlying it all. And even when things are going out of my control and destiny, I don't know how it is working out, it is not working arbitrarily. It is mm. working benevolently. So the way to move ahead is, hold. if the street lights go off, turn on the flashlight. If the sea becomes stormy, don't just look at a stormy sea, stay in that ship, that unsinkable ship we have. So that unsinkable ship, that flashlight, is our seva bhav. What? How can I serve you, Lord? What can I do to make things better? So bad things will happen to everyone, but the key question is, when bad things happen to good people, what do they do? They change right. the question from why to how, and then we can always make some small steps to make things better till eventually the street lights will come back and we'll find that we are at a better place okay mm. so thank you very much for very thoughtful questions and very insightful multifaceted i would say you had this discussion thank you Hare Krishna. Uh, well i just we just wanted to just last point that you just said that the the way to overcome this is to ha develop a seva bha and yes. uh, and and to to hold on to that torchlight so that can be the focus of the next conversation on how to cultivate that seva bhav how to transform our, our karma 
into something that will blossom and flourish that seva bhav, that love, and, uh, and, and therefore shine that light, be our torchlight in our life. So that will be for next conversation. Uh, thank you, Pranam, yes, to you, Prabhu, and to all thank of the you. listeners. Hare Krishna. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.